our sincere thank you to President Saul Jimenez Sandoval of California State University, Fresno, and other campus leaders for attending this event. The following documentary is presented by director and producer Cynthia Lucas. It will be followed by a conversation with Gandhi scholar and professor Mina Howard and Cynthia Lucas. So I want to thank our President Jimenez Sandoval for his very kind comments and his support with the Gandhi Center and the Jain and Hindu Endowed uh, Chair uh, Initiatives. And it's, I really appreciate all of you for coming here. And I also appreciate really the support of the Uberai Foundation for Religious Studies uh, who have gener generously supported this event. And it's great that we have our partners, Department of Philosophy, Ethics Center, and also Cross-Culture uh, and Gender Center who have supported me with this event. Um, this is a Women's History Month, and I'm so glad that we were able to bring this documentary to Fresno State, Kasturba Gandhi, an accidental activist, um, and uh, the director, of the film, Cynthia Lucas is here with us and she's going to say a few words about the documentary. Thank you very much, Dr. Howard. And I want to also to thank the president and all of the departments that came together and the donors that came together to make this program possible. And it's um, really exciting for me to be here during Women's History Month because this is so relevant to, to women's history. Um, I um, would like to thank each of you here just watching the film as well. I uh, decided to make this film uh, because when I was researching uh, two documentaries that I did on Mahatma Gandhi, I came across this statement that really set me back in my chair <laughs> that said, my wife became my guru. She taught me the lesson of nonviolence. And when I read that, I had been researching Gandhi for a decade or more and knew that he was a truth teller and he was always seeking the truth. So I knew that those statements were, were true. And uh, I just set about trying to, to f figure out what did he mean by that? How did she teach uh, him about nonviolence? The, the Mahatma, she taught him the master of nonviolence. And so I set about uh, researching that story and it wasn't easy because there's not a lot of, of research that's been done on her. But I was very fortunate to um, meet a biographer of hers and um, knew many Gandhi scholars and experts. And so I have been able to glean her story from all of the information that's out there and have all of the photographs of her donated to me to use in the documentary. So this is a groundbreaking documentary as American Public Television called it when they accepted it to show it on PBS stations. It's groundbreaking because no one has ever made a full length uh, documentary on, on Kasturba Gandhi, a woman in her own right. Yes, she was the Mahatma's wife, but she was a person in her own right, a very, very strong activist, accidental at first, but then she threw her whole self into being uh, an activist in early 20th century, which is just amazing to think about her doing that then. So we both hope that you enjoy it. And thank you again for Fresno State uh, for bringing me to this program and sharing it with all of you. And it is so important that um, the accidental part begins to move and then he's, she's not accidental. She becomes, like you said, uh, activist par excellence. And she becomes, she becomes a role model for our women and men and today's world, I think when the women's histories 
are not so uh, available to us. And where Cynthia Lucas brings this woman's life story and um, maybe in another documentary that she's working on. And it's just really important in today's world that we, we hear about the hidden histories of women. And this documentary is a really important step in the right direction. So thank you. At barely seven, Kasturba was formally betrothed to Mohandas, called Mohan as a boy. She was married at the age of 13, and Gandhiji, at that time, was only 12 years old. Shortly after they got married, he was trying to light a lamp in the room, and she said, he laughed at him, why, why, why do you want a lamp? And he said, oh, I'm afraid of the dark. And he, said, he also said, I'm afraid of robbers and of ghosts and of snakes. Yeah, she said, I'm not afraid of any of these. She was fearless, absolutely fearless. A lot of people gave the impression that she was just a docile housewife, just followed her father wherever he went. She was a powerful person. She was a ruling by a Supreme Court judge that Indian marriages were not recognized. We asked Gandhiji, can women go to prison? Gandhiji said, of course. She said, well, then I shall go to prison. She's the first woman to show up to resist. Gandhi became known for recruiting women into his campaigns, a trailblazing tactic. But before he could broaden his view to fully embrace women's power, the primary lessons had to be given and fearless steps taken by Kasturba. How do you deal with the violent part of violent minds and violent instruments? Only through a higher consciousness. That's what women are bringing. It is the non-violent part in creative form, which is able to resist on the one hand and create alternatives on the other. I have been doing research on the extent of women's participation in particular. And we found that um, basically the higher the degree or extent of women's participation, the more likely the movements are to succeed. Kasturba could never have guessed that countless women would follow in her footsteps. Many never knowing it. When courage and compassion like hers are in urgent need. I know it's getting late. We'll just um, I have a couple of questions uh, to Cynthia, and then everyone will be open for Q&A from you. So my first question is that uh, what insights were revealed to you as you were researching and working on this documentary? Well, I think probably the, the key one was um, even though I knew I was making it about her impact upon uh, Gandhi and who he became, I didn't realize how much <laughs> she actually was instrumental in the making of the Mahatma, really. Um, uh, maybe you could say that about other couples, but in this case, it was certainly true that she was uh, foundational in helping him become who he became. And um, I found that very fascinating just their whole relationship, um, seeing you know where he began and she en ended, and they were, they were so enmeshed, uh, and um, each, as I said earlier, evolving the other, you know, teaching the other, learning from the other, you know, they. Uh, but she, her uh, part in their marriage had never been told before, and I thought it was important for the world to know that she was so instrumental. Um, there were other insights that, you know, how difficult her life was. And that's one thing I really worked at showing and I think that comes across. <laughs> um, <clears throat> physically difficult because of the conditions that they were, she was living in, you know, in these out of the way places with snakes and 
all kinds of you know difficult living conditions, but also emotionally uh, living with Gandhi and her sons, and the one in particular that you know was having uh, a troubled relationship with his father, and her in between the two of them, um, just emotionally, it was a roller coaster. Um, I think another thing I learned was how unique her life was. Um, it's hard to think of anyone who had a life quite like hers, uh, really. I mean, I've known about a lot of heroines and courageous and compassionate women, you know, but this is such a unique story of the lives that they led. And um, I, I also learned, uh, again, I. I wanted to make the film because I, I knew her story was important for our times, but I think that after making it, I realized even more how important this is for today's world to know, really. It, it uh, doesn't diminish Gandhi any, any bit, any wit. Um, it, it, it only shows a fuller uh, picture of him and her, her uh, for the first time, but it only shows more of the truth than has been revealed in the past. And I think that's important for us to know. I think um, it's important for women and girls in particular to, to have a role model such as she is. Um, you know, I mean, uh, it, it's just very important for our times to have uh, women's involvement in these nonviolent movements. And as we've heard, the recent research shows that when women are involved, there's a much higher likelihood that they're successful and um, that they'll lead to a more democratic, if I can use that word, small d, type of so society. Uh, if women are involved, so that there's ramifications to the movements being more nonviolent, more successful, and in the long run, creating a, a more equal uh, society when they're involved. That's been documented. It's not just a wild dream that Gandhi had. Uh, it has been documented now. So. These uh, were all insights that some of them just deepened that I had, um, but others, you know, uh, were, were new. And so uh, that's why I felt this story was so important to share. So as a Gandhi scholar, I felt a little sad today because I hadn't watched this documentary. Why did we miss it? Why are we missing as scholars and thinkers about her life? Huh? Because the men tell the stories. Yeah, but many. <laughs> good point. But a lot of female scholars too. I mean, I think it's just a, it's it really is a time for awakening to see that such a big part of history. And now you go through our leaders, male leaders all over the world. Their female counterparts were very involved. Let it be Nelson Mandela. Let it be. Dr. King, let it be. So why aren't we having, you know, just really made me saddened and very happy as well at the same time that it's never too late to begin to really think about. And so my, I think I'm just going to ask, I have a lot of, but I'll ask one more question, then let you guys ask question. Uh, do you think you're done telling the story or do you have more to say? Well, I definitely have more to say. <laughs> and, um, you know, as challenging as this one was to make uh, in terms of the lack of information about her, uh, the lack as a filmmaker of photographs compared to what I had when I was working on the Gandhi film, um, it, it was very rewarding. And um, I, of course, I told you that, you know, I faced the pandemic, couldn't go to India, and, you know, um, had to cut out some of the interviews I wanted to do. But um, despite that, I, I, I want to move forward and um, definitely 
want to tell the second part of her life. Because when they come back to India, in some ways, she continues to come into her own and becomes um, a great humanitarian, you know, practicing service, sarvadaya, and to, uh, to the uplifting of all. And she um, sees that really as her calling probably more than, you know, going out and protesting in the streets or going to jail. She saw um, her, you know, purpose as helping the needy women in the villages and getting them involved in Gandhi's campaigns. And so that story needs to be told as well. Um, many facets to her and um, one of the great challenges in doing the two Gandhi films in this one is, you know, what do you leave out? These people, I mean, they were so active that, you know, you can hardly believe they did so much in their lives. How did they do it? Well, they were extremely disciplined. <laughs> you know, Dr. Rajmohan Gandhi says that she was tireless. And that's exactly what she was, always working for the cause once she became a part of the cause. So um, there's so much more to tell about her. Um, I hope you will all be eager to see that second part. Can I get a, can I get a, yeah, okay. <laughs> and Dr. Howard will be in it, featured as she was in this one. She was so important to this one. And I know she will be in the second one as well. Nice to know. <laughs> so always nice surprises, right? Um, so I'd like to ask to students and um, faculty colleagues, uh, please come up here, then we can have you. No, but we want you to come here. <laughs> we want your voice here. Please come. It's good to move around. It's good for the health. We've been sitting too long. There you go, sir. I don't think I need it. Do I need a microphone? Yes, you do. <laughs> Say your name. Watch out here. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> go for it. Okay, two things. Um, one, what is African Americans? Um, white European males have always been trying to tell our story. That is not happening anymore. We are telling our own stories now. Uh, you look at what Oprah's doing, and all the directors Oprah has um, trained. The question that I have for you is that, do you foresee this being, um, the story being told, let's say, in a series, or maybe a, a major movie with an Indian actor, um, and, and tell them the story as Hollywood would do it, or probably both? Because if you did a series, you could really cover you know, a lot more ground. Um, wow, that's an interesting question. I really haven't thought about doing a series or, you know, like a feature film. Um, I've, I've always seen this as a documentary, but, you know, I remember the Gandhi film and how important that was about him. Um, it was, you know, it, you know, I've been asked, well, was that accurate? Well, you know, it was conflated to some extent and some things were changed, but overall, Attenborough, did a fine job, and it took him years and years, and he almost went bankrupt, believe it or not, before <laughs> making that. And now we look back and it's laughable, but, um, you know, sometimes that's the case. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe a feature film would be good as well, you know, um, and thanks for that suggestion. Who else? Questions? Comments? Come on, guys. You can do it. Give them extra credit. I will. Okay. Extra credit. <laughs> yeah, students yes. get extra credit. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Think about questions. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm just wondering if you could talk a little bit more about your process for how you found the information about the Suba and um, where that information was. Uh, well, uh, I had been researching um, Gandhi for more than a decade, so I'd read, you know, uh, extensively about him. And, um, for example, there's this one four-volume uh, 
biography of uh, him uh, in which his secretary wrote down everything he was doing every five minutes. Well, you know, she's with him every step of the way. So I felt I had a pretty good grasp on the timeline and of their lives. Um, there's really not a lot, though, on her. But uh, the woman, Dr. Sita Kapadia, that was in the film, uh, one of her little subtitles I put down there was interviewed 500 people who knew Kasturba. Now that to me is very important, you know, as a source because it shows it's based upon people who actually knew her. And this was done years ago, obviously, because none of those people are still living, you know, but she did this when she was a young woman, um, Dr. Kapadia. So um, anyway, I, I just went at in all the sources. Gandhi's a big source. Now you could say, well, he's tainted, but again, uh, Gandhi and his truthfulness, you know, is so important. And so when he writes something in his autobiography about her, you know, I take it seriously and I don't think he's really fudging it. Um, quotes by her are few and far between, you know, and you see the ones I've used are practically every one, you know, I could find. I tried to use them because to get some kind of sense of what she was saying. And um, those quotes are found in a number of sources, you know, so it's, it's pretty, uh, they're accurate, you know. Um, I kept them in her, uh, the language, the English that they were translated in. Um, I didn't update it to contemporary language because I thought it would be more of the flavor of her time. But it was really a source of uh, also then doing the interviews, uh, you know, helped a lot. But um, it was, there's just not a lot out there. It just doesn't exist, you know. And so I used everything that was out there. That's, you know, all I could do. Um, but there's enough with, and, and with, if, if we didn't have Gandhi's writings, there probably wouldn't be any, you know, very much. But with his and Dr. Kapadia's and a few others, I was able to, you know, get her perspective. And that's what I wanted to do, you know, because she's always been in his shadows. And um, I know part of the reason that, you know, she's never been written about has been because of patriarchal, you know, society and so forth, but also because he is such an amazing person. He's really overshadowed her. I mean, he just is, was. And I didn't, that was one of the challenges I had in making the film, is not disparaging him so much that he is not credible, because I do think he is, you know, but I also wanted the criticism of the way he treated her to come through because that's true, you know. But I, I wanted to be balanced in showing his, his perspective and hers, you know. So when he says something like, if you die, I will celebrate, you know, Dr. Rajmahan Gandhi comes on and says, and I've read this in other biographies in addition to Rajmahan's, he only said that to people he loved. He thought it was because his goal was to die in service. So to him, if she died that way or somebody else did, that was a great honor. So, you know, um, I, I didn't want him to, you know, just be like a cold hu husband saying, I don't care if you die, you know. So I was trying to be balanced in showing him um, as, you know, who he was too. <laughs> Did that answer a question? Yeah. Yeah, I think what um, you know, the what's missing in the in the Kasurba's life that we don't have her words. Nobody wrote down all just or said anything. It's just a patriarchal system. She's there. She's around. She's working hard. She's going to jail. She's everything, but she's not. We don't have much what she said. What is she saying to him at night? What she's saying to him when he's doing certain, he thinks they're not very smart things what he's doing. 
So it's like, uh, so you have to construct, I think, and you did a great job in constructing and bringing the story together, so whatever we have available. Uh, who else? Questions? Yes, please come, come. Come on, please. <laughs> Dr. Kapoor, do you have a question before you go? Thank you. It's a wonderful thing you have done. You filled up a big vacuum, actually. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. So oh, um, actually I have uh, two questions. The first one would be, since you are thinking about making a second part and you talk like, lightly about it, are there any specific instances of her later life that you will want to examine in the next doc documentary? And the second question would be, um, more so about the form, what, uh, why did you use those weird effects when you were showing like the, the paintings? Because when it would go flip around, I thought that was a very interesting choice. I thought it was a little distracting. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I'll, I'll pass that along to my editor. It was her decision. And I'm not passing the buck. It's true. Um, actually, in the PBS version, we did tone that down um, because there were so many of them. But you like the artwork, right? Yeah. See, that was my. Now, that was mine. <laughs> no, it really was. I decided. One of the ways that I would provide context as well as um, just information would be through art, uh, Indian art, which I find to be sublime, and also animals. <laughs> uh, the animals that I brought in for context, I hope you notice them. Uh, but my editor did that little trick with the, the art, and so I, I can see how it could be distracting. I, I didn't. I liked it, but I did tone it down for the PBS broadcast, so I did hear that from somebody else, and I took that to heart, and we, we did different effects with the art. And the other question was, what do I plan for the second part? Well, um, you know, she, she really um, comes into her own in terms of helping uh, needy women out in the villages and teaching them about hygiene and health issues and you know these uh, women that just have one sari or dress you know um, she goes out there and teaches them how to spin and um, uh, you know she leads the campaign that Gandhi starts uh, to boycott British cloth and, and bring the cloth making industry, which had been enormous in India, and then the British took it over, and same way with the salt, you know. Um, and so she leads the campaign to, uh, for women to be spinning, to uplift their lives, but also to, uh, so they could boycott British cloth. And so she takes the lead in that. I think I showed a picture of her um, taking part in um, protesting against the police brutality for police reform. Um, she, she does, you know, a number of campaigns like that that she is a leader in. Um, so there are uh, numerous examples, but the theme, I think, will be Sarvodaya, which is the upliftment of all or service to all. and. Um, that didn't, you know, I didn't really bring out here. I was focusing on her teaching him about nonviolence and her being, you know, one of the first women activists at that early time. But in the second half, I want to, I really want to uh, emphasize this service work that she does. Because she and Gandhi felt that that was foundational to um, creating a better society and and also foundational to their uh, Satyagraha work when they go out and, and do that. You, I mean, they didn't do that every day of the week. It seems like they did. You know, she went to prison once uh, five times in two years or something. But, but they weren't always doing that. What they mostly were doing was this work of going out and helping the needy. You know, he's, he brings in a leper to the ashram to take care of, you know. She goes out there and helps these women who just, they don't even know, you know, 
um, how to spend. They don't know, you know, how to take care of themselves. You know, they're just out there in the, the villages. And, and so she teaches them about hygiene, you know, so that they can keep clean. And you know, these sound like very basic things, but, you know, necessary. And so that, you know, to her was that had her heart, that kind of work is helping those women. So that will be the focus. Although, you know, I'll also mention her, you know, campaigns, uh, but that I want to really focus on. Because it's it's a part of the whole Gandhian message is you, you need to prepare yourself for the times that you go out and protest and everything through the service work because the service work really helps you become humble and it helps you um, it helps you love the other you know that you're helping and so that when you come face to face uh, in a, a a tense situation or something that you understand that that person, you know, is to be respected, you know, and loved, really. Um, so the service work creates that in you, you know, your ability to stand up against violence. And, and Gandhi thought, you know, when you stood up against a violent heart like that, that that heart could melt if you had total unconditional love and humility, and that's service work is what creates that ability to do that. I like the idea of Sarvodaya very much for your the next <laughs> Dean Chapman. No, our mission here is that really thinking about we know about Gandhi Satyagraha, passive resistance, but what he really was good at to building parallel systems, taking care of the people. What happens when we are free? How do we live now? So he called it constructive program. And really taking care of every nitty gritty. He talks about uh, women's menstruation. He talks about non-hygienic conditions for the mothers who are giving birth. He talks about what to do when there is an outbreak of um, pandemic or epidemics. So he's really bringing that. But when he goes in the villages, he's with the men. Where is Kasturba? She's with the woman. And she is changing inside out. She is taking away their pardas. She is teaching them how to spin, how to be self-reliant, how to come out of their pardas and veils and be, uh, give them agency. So that's the, really, the, again, the history has missed this very, very important part of teaching women. And she does that, and she really, toward the next half of the film, I think of the next part of the film will be, I'm so excited about that, really focusing on. And I think that can be paradigmatic for us as we have, you know, resistance movements. How, how do we take care of people afterwards? What kind of teaching institutions are, or self-governing institutions we have? What do we replace with? So I think that was very, very fascinating, but she was part of it. Dr. Howard, I'm just I'm a little curious. Uh, of all the gods of, um, of of India, does she? Well, I should say, of all the goddesses of India, is there any parallel um, goddess that she uh, could be compared to, or has she gotten a kind of a status of a goddess based upon all the work and everything that she has done historically? That's uh, we haven't thought about that, right? But I think the word came to me when I was Cynthia and I were talking, Shakti. Mm -hmm. The Shakti is a female energy. It's a feminine power. Watch out. Yeah. When it exudes itself and is when it's present all around. So what when she and I were talking about this, so Gandhi is Shiva or the male representation, she's Shakti. And without him, without her, she's nothing. He's nothing. She is the power. And I think that's what when I like when Gandhi said, she's my guru. Right. And he acknowledges that the Shakti and Shiva. So it's not a, a so, sort of symbolized goddess, but it's goddess and each man or woman have that power. So it's, not, it's a feminine energy, but both male and female have it. So it's not dichotomous. It is feminine, but it's in everyone. So, but then she represents that Shakti, that power, 
that even the, and the Shakti can be very silent. The silence is not weak. Yes. Silence is powerful. And I think that's what we see in Kasturba and many other female um, co counterpart consorts also to speak. Uh, and they are with their husbands, their partners, but they are the sources of power. And I think that could be a very interesting book in itself. Look through the history and how do you find, I think you're raising, shaking, and I think you're right. I mean, you can have in different parts of the world that those kind of examples. Last question, anybody? Yes, come on, Connor. Yes, sir, please. This is my Buddhism class student, so. We always give last and first word to our students. Okay, um, so I was wondering if there's any indication through your research that you found um, what made her so headstrong and forthright. Was that just intrinsic to her character, or was there some kind of formative experience or circumstance that you think made her that way? You know what, there isn't really much at all of her as a young person. Um, but, you know, she didn't come out of poverty, so perhaps, I wouldn't call her privileged, but perhaps she had, you know, um, more of a middle class, and um, because she was treasured, um, and I bring that out, that's one of the reasons why I did, because that's one of the few things we do know, is that she was treasured, um, even though some girls weren't when they were born, but she was in her family because they'd already lost two infants. Two infants had died. So when she lived, this was a great thing to rejoice. So I'm not saying that she was spoiled, but that, you know, perhaps she had a very confident sense of herself because she was very beloved by her parents. Now she did have a brother and I'm sure maybe he was favored later, but she had some years that she was, you know, the favorite daughter and um, perhaps that did it, but we really don't know, you know, there's nothing in any history book uh, or any kind of book that says, well, this, this made her that way. It seems like um, that was part of her personality from early on because I mean she's married at 13 and she was already like that. Um, so anyway, as as the granddaughter Ila Gandhi says, uh, she wasn't the docile wife he would have preferred. But then later he realized what a jewel he had gotten, and that's what he calls her, my precious jewel. You know, later he realizes ah when he realizes how much she taught him. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. Okay, I hope that answered your question. Sure. I think it's 8 o'clock, so if anybody wants to stay back and talk to Cynthia, please do. Thank you so much for coming. We want to, tomorrow is a weekday, I teach in the morning, so. <laughs> So thank you so much for coming. Appreciate thank that, you. and have a and thank you once more. Please give it a big round of applause for tonight. Om Sarve Bhagantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makasya Dukha Bhag Bhave. Om Shanti 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 Om